Welcome to this movie showing how Design Data Manager can be used to bring control and visibility to your business processes. The engineering change process shown here is just one of many business processes that can be mapped to DDM. All the tools required to build workflows are included in the base product. With a small amount of training you can soon be creating and deploying your own workflows. We are logged into DDM as a user who will raise an engineering change request. DDM uses folders to manage the change process, and in this example we have a folder template set up called ECN. If we run a search against this folder type, we can see all of the ECNs in the system. These are all at different stages and initiated by different people. The folder template used here is totally configurable. This one is set up to allow us to search by specific criteria. In this case, we want to search for all engineering changes that originated from the quality department. We can save frequently used searches as favorites. Here we have a favorite set up to search for engineering changes that are in process. If we open one of these folders, we can see exactly where the change is in the process. From the main system tab, we have basic information about the change. But if we switch to the graphical routing tab, we see an overview of the whole process and highlighted by a green border, we see the active step. If we initiated this change, we can quickly see how far it has progressed and have a good idea of who we need to chase. This simple example shows the steps from change request through approval with the option of getting additional cost information to the engineering changes themselves, release and finally completion. By right-clicking on a step, we can view the step instance properties. This includes information about time spent at a step, and this can be important for process improvement, for identifying bottlenecks, etc. The routing trail retains a complete audit history of steps taken through the workflow, who completed the step and when. All comments added along the way are also retained. So how do we initiate the ECM process? Well, in the example we're going to look at, the user has received an email from the quality department requesting that an engineering change request be raised. By right-clicking on the folder type, we can create a new folder to hold all information relevant to the change request. We populate the fields in the form, starting by giving the folder a unique number, in this case the engineering change number, provided by DDM's auto number generator. The grey fields are system attributes and will be populated automatically. We give a long description and short description of the change, and then use the drop-down selections to complete the form. Again, these can be customised and are defined at the admin level. We click OK to complete the folder creation. We are asked if we want this to be our current working folder. Any new items we create or add to DDM will automatically be added to the user's working folder. We need to add two objects to the folder, the email that initiated the change request and a copy of the drawing referenced in the email. We use DDM's standard drag and drop functionality to add the email to the folder as shown. Once added, the email can be opened directly from DDM without searching for it in the email client. Next, we find the drawing from DDM and reference it into the folder. The drawing was part of a project, so again we use our favourites to find the drawing from our project folder. We drag and drop the drawing into the ECM folder to create a reference. DDM recognises that there are related components and asks if they should also be referenced into the folder. For now, we say no. The folder is now complete. Next, we need to attach it to the ECN workflow. To do this, we use the Send Folder To option. In this case, there is only one routing list or workflow associated with this folder type. If there were more than one, we would select the relevant routing list. We add an optional comment and then click OK.
The folder is now controlled by the workflow or the process, and so our default folder is reset as our current working folder. Two new tabs appear on the ECM folder showing the routing audit trail and the graphical overview. Our work as ECM proposer is complete. To move forward in the process, we simply click on the next valid step. The dialog box shows that we're forwarding to the ECN approval group. Again, we have the opportunity to add comments, which we do, and these will be added to the body of the email sent to the approvals group and will also be retained in the audit trail. The workflow update showing the approval step as the new active step. As I'm not a member of this group, I can't make any further changes to the folder. The engineering manager receives an email as a member of the ECN authorization group. The email outlines the change request indicating what action is required at this step, but also includes a complete audit trail of the process so far. After logging into DDM, the engineering manager uses his own favourite to find all ECNs awaiting approval. At the bottom of the list is the ECN we have just raised. He opens the folder to review the change request. Here all related documents can be reviewed, including drawings. He now has the option to reject the ECN or request an optional cost analysis. But in this case he approves the change request. The ECN members group will work on the design changes. The change request is forwarded to the group by default. In this case the step rule allows the approver to forward to an individual from the group. Logged back in as a designer, the user opens the folder to begin work. After setting the folder as the current working folder, the drawing is loaded into session and the design changes made. As we are working on a release drawing, we cannot overwrite the protected copy in DDM, so we select to use the Up Issue option to create a new issue or revision of the drawing. The revision manager opens, showing any related documents also affected by the change. We select both Drawing and Model, and then Up Issue. If we check the change reason, we can see that the ECN number and change reason used on the folder form are configured to be used as the change note on the part and drawing. The part and drawing are now up issued and saved back to DDM, and the new issue remains in session. Checking the revision history on the drawing title block, we can see that it has been automatically updated. If we return to the ECM folder, we see the new issue of the part and drawing in the ECM folder, both at a work state. The changes are now complete and ready to be checked and released, so we select the next step in the workflow and add comments as required. For the purposes of this video, I have added the current user to the releases group to save logging out and back in again. After checking the changes, the releaser can simply move to the next step to complete the release procedure. The new issue, issue 2 of the drawing and part, are now released, and the previous issue, issue 1, is changed to archived. The completed ECN is now closed and is kept on file for reference. Because the folder is at a closed state, no further changes can be made to it, so that it is a permanent record for audit purposes. In this short video we have seen how DDM can be used to control your business processes, giving visibility, accountability and traceability. For more information please contact your local reseller or info at designdatamanager.com.